Hello and welcome to this episode of WWRD, What Would the Regulator Do? In these series of videos, we take questions asked by individuals through the firm, uh, looking for a point of view of a regulator in relation to topics of interest. And for this one, it's the thorny issue of does the regulator like lawyers? And I think Silent Bob has his answer, uh, but I wanted to ask Adrian Whelan from BBH if he could give us a little bit more flavour than, than Silent Bob, who, who, who's a one-word man, as you can see. So, uh, Adrian, does the regulator like lawyers? Well, it's funny you're asking me that question, given you yourself trained as a lawyer and I worked am in a lawyer. regulator. Yeah, you are yeah. a lawyer. Um, provocative question, yes. and it's not like me, but I might give a more balanced answer. I don't think regulators particularly have a subjective view on the merits of lawyers, right? I don't think they see lawyers as good, bad, indifferent. I think lawyers, particularly in the regulated entity space in Ireland, right, play a function. They're a function between regulated entities and the regulator. They act as a buffer, they act as an administrative agent for, for passing the documents. What I will say, which is interesting, is the nature of engagement mm. between the lawyers and the legal community and the regulator here in Ireland, the Central Bank of Ireland, has definitely changed. And that's probably more interesting than your uh, thorny question. Oh, God, it's very politically correct of you. <laughs> so, so talk a little bit more about that. So the, the current type of, and, and maybe into the future, the type of interaction you expect from the, the lawyers with the regulator. Yes, yeah, so you and I are of a certain age. We remember back, we we'll say a decade or even longer than a decade ago, right? The industry was growing, it was less mature, and I think it's not too off to say it was less sophisticated. So the nature of engagement was more conversational, if honest, between industry yeah. and the regulator. I think since the scale particularly, and the maturity of regulation has increased, I think the discourse between industry and lawyers as a part of that, and the Central Bank of Ireland has become more administrative and more business-like. So there's less conversational, maybe there's less um, dialogue about the nuance or the black and white issues that there was when the industry was growing up. Yeah. And I think that's just the nature, again, of the scale and sophistication of the industry. So the, the relationship is a bit different now. Um, it's more distant, uh, you know, more arm's length, let's say. Uh, and tends to be more formalised engagement through, let's say, responses to public consultations rather than the, the pick up the phone kind of approach. Yeah, I think that that's, I, I, I think that's a good a good way of putting it. And again, you got you got things have become less rightly or wrongly become less um, principle based. Yeah. So that's why by principle based, you're going to have a, have to have a conversation, and you're maybe going to have to meet in the middle. I think it has become the levels of prescription generally and in Ireland have become more specific. So again, you are getting a request, you are getting a form to fill out. And again, there's no discussion. It is fill out the form, fill it out adequately and put it in on time. There's a little bit more of that than there used to be. Right. And so where it becomes more process oriented and mm -hmm. more, I guess, more transparent, but, but more of a formula, I guess there's more opportunity there for firms, as in regulated firms, to do that themselves, do some of that work in-house at least. Yeah, I, th I, I think... Again, I'm not a lawyer and I'm, and I'm not a regulator, but what we see is there are entities, take the Brexit application process, there's some of the firms that had their own in-house resource, be it in the UK yeah. or setting up here, and the control and command and risk functions here. There's, they had lawyers within their entity, so they, they went direct in essence. So there was a slight disintermediation. We don't see a lot of that, but that's something that could conceivably happen over time as yeah. it becomes particularly the more administrative function. And it, again, it depends what your ask of the lawyer is. Is it authorizations? Is it general administrative um, paperwork? Maybe mancos, for example, could do that themselves. But if you hit the rocks, for example, on a regulatory issue, you're going to need a lawyer. Yeah. So there's no lawyers are going to be fully disintermediated. I think the nature of engagement is going to change both with their client base and the regulator. And I think that there's a sophistication and oper more operational approach to legal uh, so you might documents. find that they are, they're, they're part of the conversation, but rather than maybe in the past, they were kind of central and, and, and very much ever present nearly, that you find that to be a little bit more 
from a regulated firm's perspective, it's more selective as to when they when they need their lawyers to help them with their engagement with the regulator. Yeah, and again, it, it, it'll go to the, to the type of firm. Not, a, not every regulated entity is going to have in-house counsel, for example, who's yeah. capable of, of the level of work or the nuance. So lawyers aren't, aren't going to be washed away in any way. But I do think, um, as the rule sets, as it pertains to asset management, management companies become more prescriptive and form-based, I absolutely believe that more people conceivably will just do that themselves. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, giving it from a regulator's perspective, mm. does the regulator like lawyers? I agree, uh, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> they're, they're neutral, they don't like or dislike, but what they like is when they meet with firms and representatives from firms, they like people in the room who can answer the questions, make it a, a, a useful, effective engagement. Um, so where it is a, a piece that's probably pre-authorization, it might be very useful to have the lawyers in the room to talk about. Once a firm is up and running, if the meeting is an operational matter, the regulator wants to meet the operational people, doesn't necessarily want to meet the, the lawyers, unless the lawyers know the ins and outs of the operations, know the ins and outs of VAR calculations or whatever it is. So I think that that's, that's probably where the lay of the land uh, sits. We had a very interesting contribution in this, so shout out to Moran Dennehy from uh, Mason, Hayes & Kern, who's an enforcement lawyer there. And we were chatting, I was chatting with Moran uh, about the difference between, in an enforcement process, having uh, a litigation type lawyer involved versus having an enforcement lawyer involved. And the approaches do seem to be quite different. I thought that was a very interesting perspective. Um, so well, look, luckily in my life, we've, we, again, if you look at fund administration or management company business or regulated funds, that that type of litigation type yeah. <laughs> of event doesn't happen that often, touch wood. Touch wood. Um, and this, if you were to put me to the pin of my collar on a yes, no answer, yeah. I would actually say regulators must like lawyers. Because if you look at the fund space that we're in, yeah. lawyers can make good money from additional or change rule sets. Dear CEO letters, looking at the nuance again, I go back, that's not a form filling exercise. That's a, a kind of review of, of root and branch of documentation, yeah. corporate governance, etc. So I'd imagine lawyers looking at this would actually say, thank God for a regulator. I built a career and my kids have pretty happy lives, right? Built off regulation. So I love regulation myself and I think there's a lot of lawyers who agree with me. So does, do, do the lawyers like the regulator, yes, do the, does the regulator like lawyers? The regulator likes uh, to have people in the room who can answer the question. Thank you. So that's all for this episode of WWRD, What Would the Regulator Do? Thank you very much for joining me, Adrian. Thank you. Anything for you, Sonic Bob? No, Sonic Bob's good too. Thanks very much. We'll catch you next time.